Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are looking at this Mercury Pettibone. Estimating this to be around a 1970s unit. It's an 18,000 pound capacity forklift and uh, has a Ford inline six, uh, either the 300 or the 240, and a Clark five speed transmission. I already started pulling some of the covers off here. Got the radiator out, uh, shroud around the engine, some of the bolt on accessories. But for now, let's see if you guys can guess why I'm pulling the engine out of this unit. I'll reveal a little bit later on as to the exact reason, but put your comments down below if you think you know why. Here I am just wrenching away. Kent comes out and is like, hey, check out this sick ass forklift I drew. I'm like, dude, that's sweet. And then he tries to show Mike his picture. Mike's like, dude, I can draw way better than that. I'm like, hey, you can't, dude. It's okay, man. Mike's sitting here telling me his fork was bigger. I'm like, dude, get the tape out. And he measures. He's like, dang, dude, you're right. Then unbeknownst to me, Mike goes behind me and takes a picture. Not sure what that's all about. Probably just saving it for later. Right about here. Almost got the air pump out. Put that over on the floor. Gonna have to rebuild it. It's got a ridiculous amount of blow by on it. It's actually blowing oil out the intake. A little bit later in the video, I'll show you a better close up of it. While I was editing this video, you'll hear a chime every once in a while. And that's like the wrench hitting the piece of sheet metal that you see there. And it rings out loud for the longest time. Further taking off parts and getting ready to pull the engine out here. Uh, in a moment, you'll hear Mike's forklift fire up. It's kind of a loud, high pitched whine. Mostly because I sped up the video. I know some people don't like the background music, but I'm going to put some on here because that drone's pretty hard to listen to. Okay, getting pretty close here. Uh, get the crane deployed here in a second. Getting some of my rigging set up. Hopefully wiggle her loose and get her out. I hope I have enough forward movement because I couldn't get the, uh, the slip joint off of this because that's just a spline drive. There's no set screws or anything, but that sucker's stuck. So I just took the U-joint out and hopefully I have enough room. So here we go. Hey, yeah, once again, thanks for watching my video. Uh, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Hit that notification bell.
This next part, I'll slow it down. You can watch a socket fly past my face. And that right there is why you need to be careful using universal joints on with the impact. And right here you get to see uh, Shelby's director's cut with the uh, creative angles, you know, trying to inspire us to be mechanics and all. Here's a quick little walk around. Kind of see how scuzzy this thing looks before we start pulling stuff off and cleaning it up. And right here you can see the air compressor. I took the head and the jug off to inspect the condition of it and see what kind of parts we need to get to rebuild it. And here's the big empty hole where the engine sat. That motor mount was absolutely thrashed. We're gonna have to custom make one because, well, there ain't much left there. Probably gonna make it out of some hockey pucks or something like that. And here you can see the engine mounts were so wore the oil pan was actually sitting on the hydraulic hose. Got the oil pan off. Started kind of wiping the sun of this down. Like these covers are gonna come off, so they're gonna go on the parts washer. Same with this cover. I want to get ready to do the uh, front main. Um, I did find a souvenir though. So in the oil pan, comment down below if you know what this is. I'll give you a hint though. I know why it wasn't hooked up. Oh yeah, so there's the beginning. Good low she tight. Getting slightly further. Got my surfaces all prepped. And you may think that they're not, but what I'm using super scraper. Now if you use a super scraper and you do it on aluminum, you gotta be really careful because this carbon is way harder than the aluminum and it will take some material off. Okay, getting ready to seal up this water pump back up. Got this all prepped. Got my bolts. Hello. Hello. My bolts. 
clean. Holes clean. A little dollop on there. Because we don't want that to leak. Yeah. That actually might be a little light. But I think it'll work. So one thing I noticed in taking this apart, me and Adam are talking about this. So this has been speedy sleeved because it was wore out at one point. And that's fine that they speedy sleeved it, but there's an installer lip right here. And you can see the the line where you're supposed to actually break that off. They left it and it wore into the front uh, the front housing. It wore some of the aluminum away. So I'll go ahead and break that off right now. So that doesn't continue to happen. So anyways, there's your speedy sleeve removed. Not the prettiest, but it doesn't ride in that part. So anyways, now I'm gonna install the crank back in. Okay, so we got the water pump back on, the front timing cover back on, crank on, oil pan back in. Had to seal this up, it's a riveted panel. I have it, it's uh, right stuff. Uh, to make sure it doesn't leak. Have that all back on. Now, uh, getting ready to do this uh, rear main seal. And if you guys have never had this before because the seal, I couldn't quite slide a, slide a seal puller in there. I just didn't want to go. So one of the things you can do is use a self-tapper with some washers, drill that in through the steel ring then you take your, uh, and you can take a pry bar or two, stick it behind here and pull it out of there. Works like a charm every time. Alrighty, so to the conclusion of what exactly caused this whole project to start is uh, input shaft seal. Someone had been here before, there's a little spring right behind there that you can kind of see that keeps tension on the that keeps tension on this lip right here against this shaft. That keeps oil from uh, leaving the transmission to come into this area that's dry where your clutch is at because you don't want your clutch disc to get wet. So anyways, replace that seal. And we're gonna seal the flange all the way around there. But we have to make sure we leave this little drain back port right here open because there is a drain hole right there so that way if uh, fluid does get into this cavity it can get back in the transmission and not build pressure and right about here we'll go ahead and save the rest for the next episode given the opportunity always make sure you leave a little message in the bottle for the next guy so please be sure to tune in the next episode where we get the engine put back in so for now this is fixed ish